Hello, this is Amber Uper, and this is another model kit review. Now, this particular model is a mini art model. It is a, a Soviet railway gondola. This is a two axle gondola. This is uh, what they call their World War II military miniatures series. But these cars actually in um, the Soviet Union, these were actually produced um, in the 30s, well before the uh, World War II. So anyway, let's take a look at this kit and see what we got. Uh, let's see. Let's look at the end of the box. I had to prop it up to get rid of the glare. Now there's the end. It's pretty much the same. So now over here, you see it has uh, basically four different versions of the car that you can do that it has uh, decals for. And some of these... Um, have the old style wheels, the early wheels, and some of them have the late pattern wheels. So uh, let's take a look at that anyway. Get the box open. Okay, so here's decals. And a large stack of, uh, of sprues, various different sprues. A lot of parts in this model, a lot of parts. So, let's start by looking at the instructions. All right, so there's the, oh, uh, it's gonna be glare. Okay, so there's the, uh, the first page, or well, the cover page of the instructions. Uh, let's see, oh, yeah, I can see the whole thing. So there's the uh, four versions of the car. Uh, a couple of them are, let's see, coal wagon, Polish state railways, that's this one here. Uh, coal wagon, Stalin railway, uh, summer 1941. Uh, let's see, this one is Duchess Reichbahn, which is probably the wrong pronunciation. Imperial Railway Administration, 1943 to 44. And this is... Uh, same from 1945. They must have changed their color patterns and things. Um, but anyway, the uh, after the Germans invaded the um, Soviet Union in World War II, of course they were going to take the the uh, railway equipment that they captured and use it. Now, one of the interesting things about these cars is the original cars ran on on Russian. Uh, railroads and Russian railway gauge is different from European railway gauge. Uh, European railway gauge is the same as uh, uh, US railway gauge. Uh, it's four feet eight and a half inches between the rails and uh, the world the Russian railway gauge at least in the um, at least uh, up through World War II uh, was uh, five feet between the rails. So you couldn't run a Russian railway car on the European railroads without changing the uh, the uh, distance between the wheels, which requires a lot of machining and whatever, changing out wheel sets. And the same goes with European cars. You couldn't run them on the uh, Soviet railways because the wheels were too close together uh, for the uh, track gauge. So anyway, now, in 135th scale, um, European railway gauge works out to 41 millimeters, and Russian railway gauge works out to 43 millimeters. So there's a little bit of a difference in, in the uh, width between the rails. Now, these, these uh, railroad uh, cars always come with, uh, well, not always, but mostly come with uh, section of railroad track. And I think this one comes with European gauge. Yeah, it says railway track, European gauge included. Now these kits can be made to uh, either gauge because the axles for the wheels um, have two little things on them so that you can set the wheels at either gauge. Um, I have a, uh, a mini art um, uh, Soviet railway uh, flat car. Uh, and that comes with uh, Russian gauge tracks. So, uh, so I've already um, messed with that one, so I know how the wheels and axles work on that. So anyway, let's go on to this. 
here's your um, your various sprues for identification. Now uh, this model actually comes with uh, German soldiers and uh, fuel barrels and a couple other things like that. And you know all your various parts. This has um, um, photo etched parts. Comes with uh, some photo etched parts, details, detail parts, I should say. So let's see. These instructions are pretty thorough. Yeah. Gives you this uh, and the instructions on how to put the uh, frame together here and the wheel sets. And you get your choice of the early spoked wheels or the uh, 1940s era solid wheels. And as far as I can tell from looking at these instructions, the, um, the frame for this car is the same as the frame for the flat car that I've got. Because uh, it, it, it looks the same in the instructions and everything. Not much difference at all. So, I'll go on. Here's uh, the underside detailing here with your, um, your uh, wheel, the journal boxes and springs and, and uh, all of that stuff for putting the wheels on. And then we get to the, the sides, the gondola sides. Um, so it shows you how to put those on. And all your finishing touches. These had rolling doors. They were kind of like a real short boxcar door. Uh, and here's some of your uh, photo etched uh, detail parts that go on these doors. Um, let's see now over here. More photo etch for the. Uh, I think that's photo etch for the uh, the lock for the door lock and that kind of stuff. And your buffers. Uh, now the uh, uh, Russian or Soviet railway cars had a different kind of buffer than the uh, than the uh, European cars. They looked different. They worked the same way, same way, but they looked different. Okay, and then we get into here's your putting your end parts on, and then uh, here's your you know simple instructions on how to build the track. Not much. Well. <laughs> There's a lot of little fiddly details, but um, it's pretty easy to build. And then we get on to the oil barrels, or oil drums. Looks like there's probably a, well, there's got to be a pump there because it's in the instructions. Uh, and you probably can't see, there we go. There's the pump in the instructions. And then it shows you some optional painting colors for the barrels, depending on what you want to do. I, I assume that uh, depends on what the, was in the barrel, different colors for different types of, um, of um, fuel or whatever, I mean, gasoline, diesel fuel, whatever it was. So, and then we get into, uh, let's see, did I miss the part about putting people together? It doesn't seem like I did. But there's your uh, painting instructions for the people. And now uh, here's, you know, one of the ways to put that together. So, and then of course here's some uh, uh, different stuff you can get from uh, Mini Art. Here's, um, here's the dead end track with the uh, track buffers and uh, Russian gauge track. This is a European gauge uh, railway uh, dead end buffer. Uh, you can get a pedestrian bridge for this if you want to. And then they have uh, a semaphore signal tower available and a railroad water crane for filling up the, uh, the tender on steam engines, which they had back then mostly. So, and there's a couple other railway cars that you can get, their boxcar kit. And they actually have two different flat cars. This is one of them. This is the one that I have, uh, that I already have. And like I said, it has pretty much the same frame as the underside of this gondola. So, now, now we got through that, let's uh, take a look at the uh, parts.
This should be interesting. I have to open the bag. That's always exciting. Oh wait, there's a rip. As long as there's a rip, it's easy to get into the bag. There we go. So, let's see what we got here for parts. Well, there's a gondola. I think these are sides, and these are probably the doors. I'm not sure. This is probably a side. Well, maybe it's a side and an end. Hmm. It's always helpful when you don't know exactly what you're looking at. There's your uh, decals. You have decals for four different um, cars here. For uh, the Polish Railway, the German Railway, and somewhere on here, the Russian. Uh, here's your CCCP decals. So yeah, there's uh, there's different stuff on here. Okay, here's your photo etched parts. Let's take a look at them right away. Just a small thing of photo etched parts. Uh, yeah, if I put them against the back, white background, you can see them a little better. So there they are. It looks like some of them are going to have to be bent. Um, for it's the assembly it looks like especially like this lock these little locks here there that's pretty clever uh, uh, bend the one side around to the other side interesting so put them away put them over there so this is the second sprue of the same kind of stuff and uh, like I said I think it's an end a side and um, at least one door oh here's the door right here not sure what that is then so it's got one door on each. All right. Oh man, we got a lot of these little ones. I have no idea. Oh, these are for barrels. That's what they are. Barrel tops. Here's the barrel. Here's the pump. The barrel pump. Uh, decal or detail parts for the cars. More detail parts. More detail parts. More barrels, uh, uh, lids, another uh, barrel pump. I don't know if these, probably tops or bottoms, probably either one. And we got, this looks like a uh, an end. That could be the door, I don't know. Could be the door frame, but I think it's the uh, end frame. For the uh, for the body, man, look at that! We have more barrel parts. <laughs> Here's another one of those frames. Then we have this is uh, your uh, car frame parts, and these are assemblies. You have to put them together. You have to put the various parts together to get your uh, to build up your frame. Uh, members. So there's that. Let's see what we got here. Another one of those. These might be the end. I think these are the end beams, like like that. I think those are both uh, for the end beams. And let's see more parts. These are probably your um, side braces. That's what I'm thinking. They are. That's what they look like. All right, so here's here's your buffer for one side, for one corner, I should say, and your um, uh, axle journal box, and here's the part that the axle that the journal box rides in, part of your suspension. So you should there's four of those, one for each each uh, journal box and one for each um, buffer. So there's those. Here's some more of your side braces. This is an outside braced car. Those are the side braces the, for the main side parts. Okay. And we have wheels. We have four of the newer 
type wheels, the 1940s era wheels, and the springs that go with for them, because the spring shackles are different on the older ones. All right. And then we have four of the earlier wheel pattern. And so that's the, uh, that's the original wheel pattern from the 30s. So there's those. Here's a sprue of uh, rail. That's a rail and the ties and the uh, rail connectors, fish plates we call them. So, two, three, four of those. You get four rails and enough ties to uh, to make uh, the uh, length of rail. Obviously you get two of these, the rail is going to be that long. If you can, probably can't even see in the picture. Yeah, about a foot long by the time you're done with the um, putting the rails together. Now, like I said, these are European gauge because that's what comes with the kit. You can get the Russian gauge um, track uh, separately from them. So there's that. Okay, this is the sprue of uh, for the people, for the uh, German soldiers, and a couple of barrel sides. And here is. Looks like barrel bottoms, I guess. There's one, two, three, four barrel bottoms. So, oh, this separate hand. That's interesting. You don't see separate hands very often. <laughs> ah, it's getting kind of technical. Separate heads, I'm, I see a lot of those now. So, I'm guessing these people with a little work could be uh, modified. Uh, You'd have to do a lot of work, I think, to modify them for civilians, but who knows? Anyway, so that's the people that come with the set. There's some more barrels. You got one. I don't know what that is. Two, three, four, five, six. That's six barrels, and then. Uh, this makes two more barrels, so that's eight barrels in total. These are little side ribs that go on. The, these are the German type barrels, German um, 1940s, well, probably late 30s into the 40s era barrels. So that's, uh, that's you get uh, one, two, three, eight barrels with it for freight. All right, so here's one of the floor pieces and your main frame parts. Uh, some coupler parts here. That's your center um, spring for um, your uh, coupler um, buffer, I guess you'd say. And let's see. Here's the other one. These two sprues are pretty much identical. So you, you end up with extra parts for the uh, for the uh, coupler parts and uh, well probably not extra parts for the coupler parts but you end up with two of those and you only need one under the car so that's just the way they make the sprues here's your ends your buffer ends right here so you got to have four of them you got two on this one and two on that one so there's that and then you've got let's move these out of the way you got these two and these are Oh, I think these are your end buffers here. Uh, what I said, I thought were the end buffers. Those must be um, inside the frame. And these are your end buffers. That's where your, uh, or the end beams, I should say. That's where the buffers go, is right here in each corner. And uh, your uh, coupler hook goes through that hole. Because these have um, uh, link and chain couplers, for lack of a better way to describe them. The European and uh, uh, Soviet type couplers were pretty similar as far as that goes, at least back in the 30s and 40s. So that's uh, that's the pile of parts that you get with this kit. And it's, uh, it's quite the pile of parts. 
Uh, this is going to take a while to build, but that's okay. Oh, here's what I was going to show you. Here is the axle. That's why there's two axles. This car is a two axle car. Here's one of the axles. It's got a little, you probably, it's going to be hard to see on the camera, but you got a little nub here and a little nub here. And that determines, and there's one on each side, and the two underneath are closer together than the two on the top. And that's what determines the gauge of your wheels um, as to whether uh, you're going to have it on European gauge track or um, uh, Russian gauge track. Um, so it's just a matter of turning the wheel to fit. Uh, you look on the back of the wheel and you probably can't see this either very well. Let me move this out of the way so you get a little better contrast. You look at that, there's a little notch in the back of the wheel. And that notch goes into, or I mean the, uh, the little peg on the axle goes into the notch in this wheel. And that's what determines your track gauge, uh, your wheel gauge. And uh, I'm assuming that you have to decide which one you want. And then you cut the other peg off so it doesn't get in the way when you put the wheels on. I'll be building this for Russian gauge because I, like I said, I already have a Russian uh, flat car. And uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'll probably have to get some more um, Russian gauge track for it, but that's okay. That's, uh, that's how that works. So that is my model kit review for the Soviet Railway Gondola 16.5-18T, which I think means tons. Could be wrong in that. Oh, uh, let's see now. It says, highly detailed model. Doors can be po posed open or closed. Can be installed on European or Russian railway gauge. Workable wheels. Photo etched parts. Workable wheels means that you can get, make them roll. Photo etched parts included decal sheet for four variants, European gauge railway track included, eight fuel, 200 liter barrels included, five figures included. So that's this model. I believe you can get this car without the figures and the barrels, but um, this just happened to be a good deal when I found it online and bought it. So, and like I said, here's a couple other cars that you can get for your. If you're uh, uh, interested in modeling uh, Russian uh, 1940s era or 1930s era uh, railways. So there you have it. That is my uh, video for uh, my video kit review. Thanks for watching.